Six years ago, I made the decision to stop live tackling during Dartmouth football practices. When I announced it to my staff, there was an eerie quiet. They weren't sure. They were waiting for a punchline, weren't sure if I was serious. And I reiterated, we're not going to tackle the spring. And the, the room erupted. Clipboards are going. Guys are saying, what are you talking about? We can't develop our players. We're going to get fired. Now, I should say, my tenure up to that point as a Dartmouth football coach was not overly successful. We had a winless season. We had a one-win season. We had a couple of two-win seasons. I had a new president that had just come on board, a new athletic director. My contract was about to end, and I made a decision that was radically out there. My attitude was it was the right thing to do by, by my players. You know, how do you come to a decision like that? I looked to my past. I was a quarterback. I never got tackled. Other people around, I thought I was a less, less of a player. You know, it was physical, aggressive, and I wasn't getting hit. I got into coaching, and I was going to be that guy, tough and physical. My football teams, man, they would compete just flat out, no stop. We had uh, injuries along the way. It was collateral damage. Concussive head injuries, at that time, it's a bruise. It was almost comical. Hey, Sam, he's, he's talking gibberish in the huddle. Uh, did you see Pete? Man, he forgot his combination. Back in that day, no one knew what subconcussive or concussive blows meant or the damage that they, they might put forth. I traveled in my coaching profession. I went to the University of Florida, uh, coaching just before the Orange Bowl. And Steve Spurrier, kind of an iconic coach, a legendary guy, a Hall of Fame guy, called me into his office. And I had been coaching the way I'd coached all the time, physical, aggressive, loud. He said, Coach, he said, you got to understand, buddy, get him to game day. He's just, they're ready to play. You just get him to game day. I then took a job at Stanford University. Uh, Bill Walsh, uh, legendary coach, Hall of Famer, uh, Super Bowl winner. And he got sick at that time. He was at uh, Athletic Administration. And we used to get, out to get together for lunch and breakfast. And he was a brilliant guy, thoughtful guy. And we talk about philosophy, history, uh, strategy. But he always cycled back to players. Take care of your players. And that, kind of, that resonated over time. I came back to Dartmouth. And I had a chance to go out to the St. Louis Rams, watch their practices. Uh, Jeff Fish was the head coach at the time. And I was amazed just how they flew around, and they had no, no contact. And I said to Jeff at the end, I said, man, what do you guys do? And do you ever tackle? He said, buddy, look, at this stage in their career, these guys know how to hit, know how to take a hit. So I have all that in the back of my mind. And then 2002, Ben Adamalo performed an autopsy on Mike Webster. And Mike was, I was a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and he was the iconic football player. Tough, physical, never, he never missed a start. 16 years in the NFL, never missed a game. He was that guy. And he died at 50 years old. Four years later, a former player of mine, Justin Strelzik, same situation, same end, 36 years old. And I'm thinking, did what I do with one of my players cause his demise? So stepping back from that, I thought, there's, there's got to be a better way. I was asked to testify in front of Congress a few years ago. And I said, and I believe this, hey, I love the game. I love my players more. It's estimated this is 1.3 to 3.8 million sports and recreation concussions every year. That's a lot of stuff. You know, Bennett's uh, work opened up a flood of research in the brain science field. And I get to, to talk to a lot of these folks about it. And because of what I do, I'm invited because no one else does it. And these, the, the researchers are fascinating, brilliant guys. And they're trying to find an answer. Why does it occur? How does it occur? Does frequency affect uh, outcomes? What's the long-term effect? Technologically, can we anticipate centralizing helmets and figure out who's going to be, uh, be concussed? When are they going to be concussed? How qu uh, quickly can they recover? And these guys sometimes malign as, hey, they're trying to get rid of the sport. That's not the case. Most of them were, for, were athletes themselves. They're just trying to figure out how can we make the game safer. United States, 45 million youth, 8 million high school athletes, 500,000 college athletes, Five to 7,000, tough to um, put a number on it, pro athletes. And you see there's a diminishing number as you go. I'm a huge believer in, the, in team sports. 90% of us in this room probably had a team sport experience at some point. You know, wonderful lessons in life. 
you know, obviously the physical benefit of running around, getting off the, the sofa, away from the, uh, the screen. Cognitive, cognitive development as well. Putting a young person in a position to pay attention, to listen, to learn, to interpret, to, to, to uh, communicate. You know, nowadays, I say this to my football players at Dartmouth, I rarely see you guys without the cell phone or the beats on or the earbuds. And it's an opportunity to leave that in the locker room, come on out, fly around with some of your best friends in life, and focus on something that you enjoy, and then go back to your regular life. That's a big thing for me. Uh, mentally, there's time, hey, focus and, and, and concentration, but also support. To have people around that, hey, I'm having a bad day. It's all getting to me. Somebody says, hey, man, you're okay. We'll get through it. Emotionally, we all have hiccups in life. To have somebody around and say, hey, broken a relationship, problem at home, mom and dad, loss of a family member. Have someone say, hey, you'll be all right. Hey, I've been through it, man. You'll be fine. Socially, to have an opportunity to interact with such a wide and diverse uh, variety of people, to come together for a common goal. On my team, I have guys, you name the socioeconomic level, the uh, racial background, ethnicity, uh, uh, geographic area, they're all there. They come together for a common goal. They have to work together. They've got to rely on each other, trust each other, work together, respond to people. And it's, you think about what we all do in life, we're on a team in some capacity, medical team, a law situation, a business world. And as young kids, you learn certain things. You coach. It's probably the first time that you have someone, an authority figure, outside mom or dad, who will tell you what to do, how to do it, critique you. And now that could be a plus or a minus. NCAA concussions per exposure. You name the sport, there are concussions. Life is risky. And as I went through some of the statistics, uh, riding a bicycle, jungle gyms, walking into a pole with your cell phone, all these things happen. A lot of folks would like to say, hey, you can't participate in team sports. You need to get away from certain aspects of, of what you do. And my, my feeling is, hey, there is. And you look at football as attacked uh, uh, quite often. It's not even the most damaging. Uh, you look at women's sports as well. Sometimes people, they don't pay attention to that. You know, this, this is important. How do we get, get by? How can we continue with sports but reduce some of the numbers that we see up here? At, at Dartmouth, my approach was quite simply, hey, we're not going to hit. And again, people say, well, what are you going to do in its place? We tackle a lot. We just don't tackle each other. And we use inanimate ob objects, pads, crash pads, dummies, and try to identify things that, that will allow us to have greater success. We came up through the Thayer School of Engineering, the idea of a, a ro robotic tackling dummy. And this allows us to hit repeatedly, execute a, a skill set, and not hurt ourselves. And it's worked, uh, a number of professional teams and so forth have it, but it's, it was an out of the box. Uh, it, paradigm shift. Can we do something that's going to benefit the sport but help save our players? And it's, my push with, it, with our guys is, we'll put you in a position to have success. We studied an awful lot of tape just to watch. Uh, teaching of tackling was a kind of an older school mindset, and I watched miles of tape. And I looked at what was taught and actually what we did. And I told my coaches, I said, look, I'm not seeing a correlation. And I brought in a biomechanical engineer, uh, expert in injury uh, prevention. And I asked him, I said, look, what I'm seeing is different contact points, different strike points, different elevation with his, your face. We tackle at different levels, uh, uh, plane-wise, front, side, and back, level-wise, high, mid, and low. And then we replicated that on the practice field. Depending on your position, you perform a different uh, tackling uh, mechanism. A big guy can't get down low, he's too big. So he, you practice around the middle or an upper level. A little guy he doesn't want to hit the big guys, drop him down. So he's, he practices tackling a little bit lower. We looked at 3,700 tackles over the last two years made in games uh, within the Ivy League. Dartmouth was the best tackling team in the league. We averaged 5.5 miss, misses per, per, uh, per game. Uh, we've had tremendous success in the past couple of years. And my players, by sensors, probably have 1,000 to 6,000 less subconcussive hits than our competition. Coaches would, would say, oh, you can't do it. Uh, I, I spoke around the country, and people just, they, they laughed. That's not football. You can't, you, you won't have success. You're going to get yourself fired. Well, we've kind of proven that there's another way. As I've spoken, and I look at the statistics, 
Other sports have the problem as well. My thought was to analyze and identify what we did that led the mechanisms to concussive head injury. And I wonder if the contact sports, which are the most favorite uh, sports, most selected sports of young people, why media attention? You know, you watch the Super Bowl, the Final Four, uh, Stanley Cup hockey. Uh, people want to want to do that. Moms and dads probably played basketball or played uh, uh, baseball. So they get the little guy out throwing the ball, the little woman shooting the jump shots. The kids want to do the same type of thing. How can we do it more safely? I was approached by the CDC uh, a while back and uh, they said, would you be willing to do a comparative? That there's a different style of tackling uh, to young people and the Dartmouth way. I said, sign me up. So we went out and the people that I spoke with, and generally they're moms or dads, they're teaching their sons, and they, they were just, no, this isn't gonna work. Well, the study is not out yet, but the indications are it's very favorable to Dartmouth. Mathematica, a policy research outfit out of New Jersey. And we don't tackle, they did. The most injurious act in the field is person-to-person -person contact. So can we eliminate some of that? And then I look at, can you do that in baseball and softball? I was shocked at the numbers in, the, in those sports. Uh, talking to softball and baseball coaches, it's sliding, it's running into the catcher at home plate, it's going head first in the slide. How about we practice sliding with your feet first? Avoiding contact. Basketball, same situation, a, a moving pick, you run into someone. Scrambling for a, ball, a, a free ball on the floor. Body to body contact, head to surface contact, those are the major uh, causes of, of injury. So can we work away from that? Checking in lacrosse. Can we remove some of that? Now people would say, no, that's not the game. As I tell people, hey, the game isn't what it used to be. That tough physical thing, yeah, you can be a tough physical mindset, but you don't have to beat your players up in practice. As I go back to Coach Spurrier, get the guys to game day. Prepare them in a, in a different fashion. You know, media attention right now, you don't know where games are gonna go. There's deniers. This isn't true. It doesn't exist. You know, in terms of science, and what the folks would tell you, there's no absolutes right now. You can't unequivocally say this number of concussions is going to end up in CTE over time. But intuitively, and I tell people, look, we're not woodpeckers. The more you bang your head, that's where physiologically we're not designed for that. So how, how do we minimize those? Still work the skill set, but protect the, the players that are participating. And that's, again, I, I look, ask people, look outside of the box. Think differently. Hey, it's easy to just do what you do. That's how I started coaching. I saw it. That's what I did. I called somebody, oh, this is how we, we do it. Well, how about thinking about things, watching how you guys perform, and then adjusting your practice format? You know, people right now nationwide are saying, hey, if I had a son, I wouldn't allow him to play. I have a son. He's not going to play football. You know, the United States is the most obese country in the world. Do we pull back opportunities? Or do we allow people to maybe practice and, and be involved a little bit more safely? And what I put out is, uh, to people is, hey, you become involved. As coaches, we design the practice schedules. We design the drills. We uh, put forth the frequency that people are involved with it. How about if we become a little bit more educated about what we do? How about we look forward a little bit? How about parents hold us accountable for what we do? I can tell you straight up, player on player contact, that is the greatest cause. So if you're a mom or dad and you go into a softball game and people are running into each other, how about saying to the coach, you know, hey, I love what you're doing, but can we kind of back off that contact? Youth football. If you've seen Friday Night Lights, to me it's, a, it's a child abuse. And mom or dad are sitting back there just, okay, go for it. Why? That's their paradigm. Football, that's how it used to be. We've got to move things forward. And the people that are, can do it are right here. We want to put on the coaches. No, we're all responsible. We're a member of a team. If you think along those lines, get active, whatever team you may be involved with. And where is it going to go? People are going to have greater success. And my attitude is, hey, I want to preserve the game. But most importantly, I want to protect our children. Thank you.